that are used. If you click into a technique, you get more information, such as which APTs have been seen to use it, what software they use to exploit the technique, as well as ways you can detect it, and possible mitigations. So attack can be used in a number of ways as a blue teamer. A couple quick examples. You can use it to aid investigation and threat hunting. For example, using the framework, you can know what to look for, what stage of an attack you might be in, and what might happen next. For example, if you get an email with a dodgy attachment, the next thing you could look for would be user execution of a malicious file, i.e. the attachment. If you get evidence of that happening, the next thing you could look for would be scheduled task, which could be used for persistence. In this way, you can use it as a cyber kill chain. It can also be used for attribution, because the framework gives information on which APTs have been found to use which combination of attacks. Attack can also help by testing your defenses. You can pick one of the techniques, simulate it, and see if you're able to prevent it with your current technologies, as well as if you can detect it, and if it's determined to be bad, if you will alert it to your security team. A good way to do this is using Red Canary's Atomic Red Team uh, framework, which will automate a lot of the process. So that's attack. Where attack focuses on the attacks that the attacker might use, defend and engage are defender-focused. So defend is based around artifacts. These are IOCs, observables, whatever you want to call them. And countermeasures. These are things you can implement to improve your defenses. There's also engage. Engage is about adversary engagement. This is ways to slow down your attacker and learn about their techniques when they're on your systems. Now, both these frameworks are still in beta version 0.9, so a lot may change over the coming months and years, but this is as they are now. So what is defend? I've only got 15 minutes for this talk, so I won't have time to discuss both defend and engage. I've picked Defend because it's the most developed of the framework so far, and I would say for most people, more useful. So, this is Defend as it stands now. Hopefully you can kind of see. Like Attack, it's a matrix. There's over 100 different techniques or countermeasures right now. At the top, you have the tactics. So there's five. They're pretty self-explanatory. There's Harden ways to make your system harder to compromise. There's detect, which is monitoring, analysis, stuff like that. There's isolate, so how to stop an attack spreading through things like allow listing, deny listing. There's deceive, this is decoys, honey pots, honey nets, stuff like that. And finally, there's evict. So a way to get the attacker off your system if they're already on through things like locking their accounts and terminating their shell processes. So the next level down are the techniques, and below that are the technique subclasses or subtechniques. Now again, it's still in beta, the terminology is a bit, changes a bit, but both of these can be just called techniques or countermeasures. In case you're wondering, if you can see it, the number in the circle is the number of references the countermeasure or technique has, which I'll get to shortly. So to continue our uh, exploration, let's pick one countermeasure and look into it a bit further. I thought strong password policy because it's pretty easy for me to explain, so it's good for me. And I'm sure all of you know what a password is, so I don't have to explain that. And it's still very important to cybersecurity because that's still how a lot of compromises happen. So this is the strong password policy countermeasure page. At the top, there's some information. In the middle, some stuff to do with the attack framework, and at the bottom, references. Probably can't see, so luckily, we're going to zoom in. At the top, this is just the information section, a definition of what it is, uh, how it works, which is how it works, surprisingly enough, and considerations are things you can think about before implementing it. Below that is digital artifact relationship, which I will come back to in a bit. So... You can see for strong parts of policy, it's quite short, the introductory sec uh, section. Unlike, for example, this one you can't see probably, but this is process termination. So some of them have a lot more information. 
but we're not talking about process termination. Strong pass with policy and how it relates to attack. In this case, you can see it's got valid accounts, account manipulation, and create account. You might be able to see that. So all stuff to do with accounts, as you'd expect. And at the bottom are the references. So these are things such as uh, patents, books, web articles, white papers, anything that can give you an idea on how to successfully implement the countermeasure. In this case, for strong password policy, they have NIST Special Publication 800-63-3, which is 75 pages on how to create a strong password. So, back to the top, digital artifact relationships. In the blue box is strong password policy. This is the countermeasure, the technique. And the, in the yellow boxes, they are the artifacts. So you can see here, strong password policy, the countermeasure, strengthens the artifacts of password and user account. So the logical next step is to look at one of the artifacts. Let's pick password because it's easy. So this is the artifact page. Again, it's got some basic information at the top, and it's got the relations to different countermeasures from the defend framework and offensive techniques from the attack framework. So in this case, countermeasure techniques, strong password policy as we saw, and also one-time password, which use limits uh, the password artifact. And in this case, there's no offensive techniques. We can see also there's a parent class of credential. And if we look at that, there's a lot more. So for example, there's the subclasses, such as, I can't really see on the screen, but session cookies and um, encrypted credentials, Kerberos tickets, stuff like that. There's more countermeasure techniques, such as decoy tokens, and there's decoy credentials, and a very, very, very long list of mitre attack attacks, such as credential dumping, LSAS, secrets, stuff like that. Hopefully, by now, you're starting to see how the attack framework with the countermeasures and the artifacts and the well-established um, attack framework can work together to, to be used to strengthen your defenses. Going to artifacts, this is the total list as they are now. There's 232 of them as of today, or when I took the screenshot anyway. If we zoom in a bit, you can see there's four categories, top level, files, network traffic, software. They're all quite self-explanatory things, things like certificates, commands, files, emails, network packets, browser extensions, anything that could be left over from an attack which could give you some idea of what's happened, what to look for next, and uh, precautions to take in the future. So, that's a quick overview of what the Defend framework is. So, how, how can we use it? I've thought of three quite simple but useful examples. One is picking a tactic or technique. You work through the framework, learn about them, and then you can make sure that you're following the countermeasure recommendations by looking at the references, if there are any new countermeasures you can implement, and to make sure everything's fully documented for everyone's favorite time of year audit season. For example, you've got Harden, the first one, you're working through application hardening, and you get to process segment execution prevention. When you get to the references, you see there's an article by Microsoft on how to enable data execution prevention on Windows 10. And there's also an article by Red Hat on the no execute and execute disable bits, which can be enabled in the BIOS. So you can use this to make sure you're following all the guidelines to harden your system against process segment execution prevention. Another example, De uh, Deceive, Decoy Environment, Environment Connected HoneyNet. In other words, a honeypot. Do you have one? If not, the reference is a patent by Alcalvio Technologies called Modification of a Server to Mimic a Deception Mechanism. In other words, how to create your own honeypot. Another way you can do it is by picking an artifact. So do you have ways to detect and log the artifact? Are countermeasures in place to protect against misuse? For example, files, executable file. Do you have allow listing in place so that only known good uh, executables can run? If not, do you have deny listing in place to make sure ones you don't want to run can't? 
Or failing that, do you have dynamic analysis, like a sandbox, or emulated file analysis, to check the file before it runs? This could be good in combination with email attachments, for example. Talking of email, have you got homoglyph detection, making sure the email comes from bsides.com, not b5ides.com? Do you have reputation analysis, both for the sender and the sender's mail transfer agent? And the third way, so I said at the beginning on how you can use attack as a blue teamer. Now you can use defend with attack. The uh, defend framework actually has an attack lookup in the top left corner. And if you put in an attack, such as T1059.001 PowerShell execution, you get a nice diagram relating PowerShell execution, the attack, with the artifact, executable script, and all the countermeasures. So do you have file content rules, such as Yara, to check the script before it runs? Do you have hashing in place, so again, take the hash of the script, check it against virus total or something, and make sure it's not malicious? So, that's a very quick overview of what the Defend framework is, how you can use it. In summary, Defend is attack for the defender. It provides actionable advice on how to improve your defenses, and you can use it alongside hardening guides, such as CIS controls, and frameworks such as NCSC's Cyber Assessment Framework. If MITRE keep developing the Defend framework as they have with ATT&CK, I foresee it being an invaluable resource for blue teamers in the future. I would say any questions, but we don't have time, so I'll just leave you with a screenshot of what the Defend framework looks like right now. Thank you.